And welcome to a new episode of PR360, and I'm your host, Brett Dyster. If you could please subscribe to PR360 on all your favorite podcasting apps, leave a five-star review. Let's get to the number one business for PR. They'll greatly appreciate it. But this week, we're going to be talking about leaks. We're going to be talking about the gaming industry specifically within those leaks because there's been a ton of those and a lot of high-profile ones as well. But with me, I have Andrew Mc mccray with me and he is uh, basically a public relations manager at gearbox Inter entertainment which is a gaming publisher slash developer as well he's also had a slew of other types of jobs managing different clients from the pr tech firm and we're glad to have him on the show so welcome to the show andrew thanks brett appreciate it excited to be here yes and the first question asked all my guests is are you a coffee or tea drinker I am a coffee over tea guy, personally. Um, I prefer homemade also, if that helps. I, I, I'm not really a big Starbucks or uh, Dunkin' fan myself. Uh, so you want to buy the bags and make it yourself, basically, is what I'm hearing. Yeah, got to gotta avoid those high coffee prices. <laughs> I think they've gone up like 10%, which was I mean, quite high for, for Unbelievable. coffee. Unbelievable. <laughs> so... I gave a brief introduction to you, but can you explain your expertise to our listeners? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I've had a pretty diverse career <laughs> working on a ton of different stuff. Um, so I, I started out working for a boutique firm um, that was focused on tech startups, um, you know, uh, helping them build a brand using earned media and thought leadership type of opportunities. Um, everything from like uh, mental health uh, support apps to smart baby bottles and mortgage <laughs> finance solutions, those sorts of things. Um, and then went on to uh, work on a bunch of esports and gaming clients at that same firm. Um, Riot Games, uh, Wise Ventures were later on in my career, but those are two esports brands that I've worked with heavily. And then uh, now I work here at Gearbox Entertainment, where I'm on the publishing side of the business, uh, helping uh, independent developers tell the stories of their games through earned media as well. Um, we're basically focused on being the world's most developer-friendly publisher at uh, Gearbox Entertainment. So basically just trying to get out of the way, let the folks making the art make the art, and um, tell all the exciting stories along the way. Gotcha. And then... When we're talking about leaks, I mean, there's been frequent leaks happening in the video gaming industry before Grand Theft Auto, which we're going to say GTA 6 from now on, but Grand Theft Auto 6, there was Battlefield 2042 had their source code leak. And for those that don't understand, source code basically means the foundation of the game. If someone steals your source code, they can make cheats and hacks that you can't detect really, or it's really hard to do. But... How can PR pros maybe curb this? Because I don't think you can get, totally get rid of leaks. I think that's just going to happen. But how can you curb this from happening? Yeah, I think um, it's unfortunate, but I think we're always going to have to deal with this communications challenge, as you've noticed. It's, it's not slowing down, and I, I don't think it's ever going to go away. But I think there's a few things that communicators, regardless of their industry, can keep in mind in a leak scenario and when preparing for one that I think is going to be really helpful and pay dividends down the road. But um, I'd say the number one is just having that understanding that leaks can happen at any time. And, you know, therefore, uh, crisis comms planning is just so incredibly important. Um, being able to jump immediately into executing a plan versus having to develop it real time and, uh, you know, go through approvals and um, consider all the factors involved is, is going to be really challenging um, in a stressful situation like that. And I think uh, also meeting with your team and having an understanding of, when is it time to break that just in case glass? Because the, the <laughs> for busting out that crisis comms plan, the the other big factor there, and the reason I even say that is um, the Streisand effect. You know, the the natural reaction when something gets leaked that we wouldn't want to is to immediately go try and pull it down. Um, but um, you know, oftentimes trying to uh, limit the exposure to something actually shines the spotlight on it that much more brightly and um, leads to perhaps uh, the actual confirmation of the news cycle being more important than the news itself. And that's kind of what we saw here in this uh, Rockstar and Grand Theft Auto situation where um, 
it was lightly reported on when it was initially leaked. And then once uh, Rockstar began to uh, DMCA or take down that content, it was effectively confirmed that it was actual real material from the game itself. And then it pretty much gave everyone free license to talk about it in that context. And so um, just kind of understanding that you know, sometimes there are scenarios in which we might want to ignore or, you know, not uh, focus on the leak itself. Um, the other thing I think that folks should focus on is um, building strong relationships with the community team. Um, we on PR, we handle the earn side of things, but typically speaking, when leaks occur, the first individuals that are going to notice those are the, the smart team members that you have on the community side, the folks that are monitoring those social channels and keeping an eye out for chatter. Um, having those strong relationships and building those uh, lines of communication before a crisis scenario is going to be just super, super important. Um, and then lastly, I think finding ways to invite the community and invite uh, your stakeholders into the conversation as early as possible in development um, is going to be really important. And the, the reason why I say that is, uh, you know, the whole point of PR is to inform your public and kind of tell your story and an informed public is going to be the first individuals that can kind of jump to your defense. We as the PR team can't be everywhere at once, but if we're doing our due diligence in terms of uh, educating our audiences ahead of time, then they should have uh, plenty of ammunition to squash false narratives or address problems that, you know, just through bandwidth, we may not have the time to address immediately. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, the GTA 6 or Grand Theft Auto 6 one was mostly, it was a hacker that basically found a vulnerable server, got into it, and then stole a whole bunch of data. So is this, and it looked bad for a lot of gamers because gamers were like, this looks terrible because a lot of them don't really understand gaming development at all. And so that's the other issue here. So, I mean, should you take a skate? Now, skate, for those who don't know, is an EA game and they've, done some interesting communication where they did early stuff of like, this is how we're making our game. Should it, developers and PR managers kind of tweak that to be like, all right, well, if leaks are going to happen, maybe we should do more of a, this is how the game development's going instead of just releasing it all E3 and having a very stylish, polished CGI trailer. Yeah, I, I really appreciated what Skate did in terms of the, the last part I made of just inviting the community along for the full ride of production because you're 100% correct. Most people do not understand the crazy world that is game development and um, just by its nature, it's very, very unpredictable. Um, I think having information leaked ahead of time kind of puts folks in a tricky spot for a number of reasons. You know, it, it sets false expectations. Um, you know, the community if they say it looks good you know they're going to expect it sooner if it looks bad they're going to have a false narrative of what uh the uh the product even entails before they've even had their chance to to, to dive into it but um i i think i wouldn't say entirely upend or, or switch you know the way that these games are being promoted but i i do think there's a number of things that we need to change or take a look at on the pr side of things um to your point uh, about security previously, I think it's going to be really important moving forward that PR and the communications arm of the business are super tied into the data security conversation overall throughout a business. Um, you know, uh, like you mentioned, this was a bad actor. And so, you know, it, it wasn't a, a whoopsie kind of moment. You know, somebody posts a blog that goes live early. It was a, a malicious bad actor. And so knowing the volume of assets that communications teams are responsible for, I think, um, continuing to be skeptical, continuing to take those security challenges very seriously is going to be super, super important. Um, you know, I think to the point of bringing the community along for the ride and what I chatted about previously, PR 101 is going to be just so important moving forward. Rockstar is a little bit different of a beast um, in our industry. I, I would say you could probably compare them to like the Apple of our space. Their news is just so valuable and so impossible to miss from a, a coverage standpoint that, you know, they don't necessarily need to employ the strategy that most other developers do of having that long form continuous stream of communication with an audience, because when they're ready to share their news, there's going to be folks there to listen. Um, and I think in this instance where, you know, the game had roughly been announced, it's still two, possibly three years away from even being ready for prime time. 
um, because they have that habit of you know only doing interviews when it suits them, doing things closer to the actual launch of the title itself. They did have a less informed public here that was able to come to their aid and uh, you know really speak to the status of the project overall. I think any informed consumer, and we saw this in the GTA one, is is going to say like the, the initial premise of the information shared was. You know, the first thing that they finish in terms of video game development is the, the graphics and visuals, and that's just flat out not true in any capacity. Why would you paint the house before you are done building it? Uh, makes makes no sense whatsoever. So I think uh, it really comes back to just focusing on the basics and having that ongoing discussion with our key stakeholders so that they're prepared and well-equipped to jump in to come to your aid when it's needed. I mean, this was just a thought, but could PR pros and maybe get some newer developers or some developers do almost like a 101 of how to do game development for just for the regular public? You don't have to go in depth, but this is how you start a game. This is how you create the assets. This is how you do this, because I feel like the more information you can do that part, the better informed the public is because if the public's not really informed and I'm pretty sure the younger generation, I understand it just because been a gamer for most of my life so i understand that game development takes a long time now when it was doom it took a lot less time because there wasn't as many 3d assets but is there a possibility of doing that kind of education where it's like you partner with like a epic and use unreal 5 engine to like tell people this is how you create the world this is how you create the characters and do like a a small step-by-step thing yeah i think um (laughs) On a macro level, if we could get everyone in the industry to begin to educate the consumer base, I think that would be a great first step. That owned content, um, telling stories way early on in the product's life cycle is traditionally challenging from an earned perspective as you know, dates can change, information's fluctuating. There, there's so many factors at play that most media you know, probably aren't interested in that point. And I think um, getting uh, organizations, developers, publishers, even those outside of the games industry, um, more uh, capable in terms of the development of their own content is going to be really helpful. I think things like dev documentaries, like you were just describing, are going to be massively important. Um, I think the key challenge there for communicators is that um, you can't you can't spoil all the surprises early on in the project, right? Because then you're kind of taking wind out of sails for later on in the campaign. So I think. Um, it really comes down to who is able to create that engaging content that still provides value to the community so that they tune in, um, learning to draw that crowd early, but also not hampering the later beats of your campaign where you really need to drive that focus and purchase intent on the the road to launch. Mm -hmm. And the other side of leaks is more employees because employees can leak things early as well. So yep. It should employee relations just be just as important as the cybersecurity side and just making sure you keep up or at least try to have high morale. I understand that the gaming industry has a terrible, I guess, I guess reputation now of crunch and having the long hours and no sleep towards more towards the launch of the game. Should there be a better, I guess, communication with employee relations and making sure and checking in and making sure that they're okay, so they don't decide to leak your game ahead of ahead of schedule, and you're like, well, now I yeah, have to yeah. like throw my plans out and try to figure out how to deal with this one. Yeah, I, I think um, you touched on an important point, which is the the nature of crunch in our industry. It's not something that you know anybody enjoys, and it's something that the organ or the industry overall is trying to address currently. There's um, a number of development partners that we work with, for example, that do a four-day work week. You know, they're very um, firm in terms of that work-life balance and giving their teams that important refresh uh, at the end of the week so that they come back refueled and with that additional creative energy. Um, but I don't necessarily think like no amount of pizza parties or you know like virtual happy hours or that sort of thing is really going to stop uh, a bad actor, in in my opinion, from doing things like that. Um, I would also say. I, I would hazard a guess it's largely not the developers themselves who are actually causing this problem. You know, they're artists at heart, or at least that's the way that I have viewed and kind of described their field with them. Um, they are probably the last, least likely individuals to publish their work ahead of time, just understanding that the scrutiny gets pointed at them. And, you know, it's something they love and they want to make good work. But 
Um, I think it's uh, it, it, it all comes down to having everybody understand what the objectives of your campaign are, having a unified team. And so certainly some amount of work in terms of internal communications and just cultural development within a brand or organization is going to be really important for that. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, from your perspective, like what are the negative side effects of leaks? I mean, we've talked about it in a little detail, but what are, cause no one really sees the negative side effects. If you're on the other side and you haven't had to deal with it from the PR side and you're just, reading the news about gta 6 you don't understand the negative side effects so how what what are those yeah i think it's um it's almost a problem of pollution right you know it, it's putting information that you know would have had context later out into a environment where it is just released on its own and so you know the world can run amok with uh you know what is this thing we are seeing and I think we saw that in uh, Rockstar's statement where they were just overall disappointed at the way the information had got shared. There's uh, so many people are anticipating this title, and I do think they they have that sense of ownership and responsibility for the people who play their game. Um, as we talked about before, it sets us false expectations. Um, if it looks good, they're going to say, "Okay, give it to me tomorrow." And you know, there's there's a lot of other components to game development, and that's not usually possible. Um, it, it forces um, a use of resources on the communications team that they would probably not prefer. Um, you know, time, hour, bandwidth, the creation of new content to explain the information that was leaked much sooner in the communications plan or in the calendar overall is, is going to have a lot of impact. Um, it, it's also an ineffective use of uh, the audience's attention. Um, gamers are very tech savvy. It's, it's young people. You know, it's that hard to reach audience. And um, their attention's already at a premium. And so if you have them focus two and a half plus years ahead of the game's launch, you know, it requires that same amount of energy to get them refocused and, you know, obviously aiming towards that purchase intent closer to launch. So that, that's a big factor as well. And then um, as we briefly discussed, ineffective use of information, those beats, the stories that you would want to tell later, revealing that content in a, in a meaningful way where context is provided and, um, you know, everybody kind of understands what they're looking at. Um, those need to happen closer to launch, <laughs> frankly. And, and so having, um, you know, that exclusive or that wow factor initially taken away from the material before it's even really have a chance to define itself is, is definitely a communications challenge overall. Mm -hmm. And I mean, with that, is should you just now make a couple different strategies for a possible leak happens? This is what we do now because it it just seems like, especially nowadays with even even in tech, there's a lot of leaks going on. So should there be a couple different like avenues or scenarios where you're just like, you know what, let's just plan ahead for at least some of the scenarios. We can't really name all of them because it's just impossible. But at least some of the scenarios should we just now do that so we're not wasting time. When it does happen, we're just a little ahead of the game. Yeah, I, I think that's right. I mean, as PR professionals, we develop, you know, the rude Q&As. We need to develop a, a rude PR plan. You know, what if somebody comes in and interrupts the whole the whole flow? Um, you know, uh, a good plan just needs to survive first contact with the enemy. Um, maybe it's a good idea to have plans about uh, what happens if the enemy goes left or right. You know, uh, I, I think it's super smart to... Um, as I noted at the beginning, just have a crisis plan to make sure everyone in the organization understands at what point do we, um, you know, activate that plan. Um, because again, it, there are scenarios where it would be appropriate to not address a leak. You know, um, nobody's personal information is at risk. Uh, if it's not readily putting someone in harm's way, um, you know, it could be a scenario where simply ignoring it takes the wind out of the bad actor's sails and the problem could potentially go away on its own. Um, inaction is hard for PR. <laughs> I, I think oftentimes we want to kind of jump in there and, and wrap our uh, wrap our arms around the problem and, and start uh, communicating on behalf of our brands and on our clients. And I think sometimes uh, counseling caution or counseling uh, patience is another route to go. And then almost, should it be more of a tiered plan for that? Maybe you shouldn't, announce it to everybody but maybe you should do it to your loyal fans instead of be like hey look at there was a leak it's not it's not finished yet 
but give us a few more years or how many ever yeah. how many more months or years or whatever before it goes gold which uh, for those that don't know going gold means it's actually going to be released it's 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 going to be out to the masses but should there be that i mean you don't have to do it to everybody but you can escalate it to like different tiers like your loyal fans maybe everybody else maybe the press i mean yeah and i think um th that's what gta did in terms of this leak you know their, their statement that they put out of you know flagging the disappointment flagging um that it's it's not going to impact the thing everybody loves and that it's uh, basically just reassuring their community that they're still getting the game that they wanted and uh, that these things will be explained in time was probably the best route. Uh, beyond that, I haven't really seen them take any interviews or kind of, you know, over index in terms of that explaining, which I think, you know, is smart. Let's course correct. Let's try and get back onto the plan that we had initially versus, you know, again, kind of over indexing on the need to explain every single nuance of that content that was shown. So, um, Yes, I think it is important to do light touch communications uh, initially when bad things do happen. But to your point, you don't need to, you know, it might not be a proactive press push. Again, those relationships with the community team, like you were saying, maybe it is just a message on Twitter. Um, obviously, media follow those channels, but proactively amplifying these things is, is not generally <laughs> probably a good idea for the brand overall. But you're right, the, the most tapped in communities definitely need to know. And then again, hopefully you get them on your side and um inform them enough where they can at least go to bat in those um you know sub subsections of reddit or you know in those community chats with their friends to help reassure them that's i think the power of the message that they were going for there yeah i mean i mean should we just accept this as a norm i mean for example different companies bigger companies could have a bigger problem with it as opposed to smaller companies so should we just accept this just as the norm and then try to figure out what to do with that and maybe have a plan in place just because it's the norm now. I've, like I said, I've seen so many leaks of call of duty now that it's just kind of commonplace for call of duty to have a leak. Yeah. I, I think the, uh, the other thing, you know, there's kind of the clout economy within uh, gaming overall, you know, there, there's so many people involved in their space. There's influencers, there's people on the communications team, there's devs that have a hand in making it. There's, know outsourcing groups that spread of information there's there's just too many um different angles it's something we should count on having to deal with um but it's an exciting communications challenge i guess right because if everything always went to plan uh what's what, <laughs> what's the fun in that <laughs> yeah and i mean what should the messaging be because i mean messaging is all about this you can turn a negative into a positive if you do it right always it's Always, if you do it right, you could turn a you can turn a negative even more negative. But is it about the messaging? Is it about you know what? This is early. We didn't really want to show you this until it was in a better build because there's different builds in games. Is there something like that that you can like massage some leaks into be like so the so the gamers are like oh okay because it seems like the messaging is all a part of this. Like how do you message something does dictate how people view it. Now, a lot of times people are like, Oh, just PR speak. So mm -hmm. terrible PR people because they're yeah. trying to make it sound better. Yeah. I think um, the other point to keep in mind throughout all of this is just the different type of voices that you do have in that communications environment. And I think building relationships with, um, I think uh, the, the press fluencers, if, that, if that's a term the audience or, or you might be familiar with, those folks that kind of walk that line between influencer doing those brand integrations, but also like a journalist. They want to be treated like a journalist. They want to tell stories through their channels like a journalist. Um, folks like SkillUp in uh, in MySpace in particular, he's a great example of someone who does not traditionally take money from developers, but um, you know still kind of creates that same type of um, quick digestible YouTube content that. Um, our audiences really love. And so finding ways to effectively communicate with those sources that your um, your audience can trust um, just by default, I think is gonna just be so much more important. I think um, today, most gamers are pretty savvy with how influencers in our space works. You know, here, here, here's a check, please read my ad, please play my game, that sort of thing. And so building those inroads with folks that the audience knows specifically don't take money um, is critical because those are the voices that they're going to be most likely to trust when bad things happen. 
And then, I mean, talking about employee morale, when a leak actually happens, because uh, that's the other aspect of it. How do you make employee morale a little bit better? Because, I mean, I'm pretty sure a lot of the artists and developers are like, man, we didn't really want to show it like this. Yep. Feel, this is half finished. This isn't really finished yet. So how do you help with that side of it too? Because, I mean, there is the other side of the employees going, well, what the heck? Like they showed it to them before we wanted to show it. Yeah, and I think it's about building that relationship with internal stakeholders and um, communicating as soon as something bad or a crisis situation does come up that, hey, you know, this this is what our here, team's here for. We're prepared for this and we're on it. Um, the reason I think that's so important is because um, those other folks in our organization are not trained communicators. And, you know, if I'm an artist and someone's attacking my work, the first thing I would want to do personally would be jump into the fray of the of the ongoing communication and try to address, no, you're wrong. Here's what the actual information is, you know. Effectively, as you pointed out earlier, digging yourself a deeper hole or possibly, you know, just getting into um, unwinnable Twitter battles um, throughout the, the internet and the community space, that's not going to help anybody. It's not going to improve the situation. And so internally, I think the most important factor is being transparent, uh, demonstrating what steps you're being taken to kind of help resolve the situation and requesting that trust from the larger organization that your team has the expertise to, to tackle problems like this when they come up. All right. And fun question for you. What's your all time favorite game? Oh man. I have been thinking about this one uh, <laughs> for a little while now, but I, I, I couldn't narrow it down to one. I got, I got three answers for you. Uh, Skyrim. I, I love open world RPG games. I've spent countless hours in that one in particular. It's just something about the world that kind of wraps me up. Um, God of War. That's probably one of my favorite franchises of all time. The storytelling is incredible. The mechanics of the game are incredible. Um, and I love mythology. And then I'm a big strategy and RTS uh, guy. So I, I think um, Total War 3 or uh, Homeworld, an upcoming title that I'm working on, are, are really my two favorites at the moment. It's um, Amazing to see the confluence of like good game mechanics and storytelling all kind of rolled into one. So those are my three. So the follow-up question is, which version of Skyrim? Oh my goodness, yes, the the forty-six add-ons that you can you can throw on there. Uh, yeah, or the re collectors double uh, edition here. You know, um, <laughs> that game's too much fun. I I wanted to just keep making it for as much as they as many times as they want. I'm totally okay with that. Fair enough. And where can people find you online? Uh, LinkedIn is probably the best place to reach out to me. Uh, I'm uh, Andrew McRae there as well. <laughs> and uh, yeah, reach out. I'm happy to chat PR. Or uh, if you want to jump into Discord and play some games, I'm, I'm always down for that too. All right. Any final thoughts for listeners? Um, the one final thought I would ask or add is, um, you know, if, if any of this sounds exciting in terms of the world of, of gaming or there's folks out there that are looking to make a switch, um, Gearbox Entertainment is hiring. We're definitely looking for PR managers and uh, a senior director of communications. So um, feel free to reach out. Happy to help if anyone's interested. All right. Thank you, Andrew, for joining PR 360 and sharing your knowledge on just the gaming industry in general. Of course, Brett. Thanks. Anytime. Um, <laughs> feel free to reach out if you have any questions. This is a good chat. All right, and thank you for listening to PR360. As always, please subscribe to PR360 on all your favorite podcasting apps. Leave a five-star review. Let's get up to that number one spot in the business category. But join us next week as we talk to another great thought leader in the PR industry. All right, guys, stay safe. Get to understanding possible leaks that could happen within your own company and industry. And see you next week. Later.